on today's Techno Babble, shooting for iMag versus shooting for a satellite campus. This is Tech No Babble, your weekly source for church video and graphics news, perspectives, tips, and tricks. And now, here's your host, Paul Clifford. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Tech No Babble. I, of course, am your host, Paul Allen Clifford. Hey, uh, drop me a line, paul at trinitydigitalmedia.com. Or give me a call, one 763 By the way, if you have left me a message and I haven't responded to it, there must be something going awry with the voicemail. I'm going to check into it, but as I tried to uh, do it myself, it, it seemed to work perfectly fine. I just keep getting hang-ups after exactly 10 seconds. At first, I thought it was someone who had the wrong number, but it, they seem to be coming at odd hours, and I know we techies do operate on odd hours, so that could be what's going on is there's a, something going awry there. You can also drop me a line on Twitter. I'm at Paul Allen Cliff, P-A-U-L-A-L-A-N-C-L-I-F. Remember, no E's in my name. A-L-A-N is my middle name. Okay, so let's get started with today's topic. I have been at a church that's done IMAG for about uh, five or six years. No, wait. More like ten. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. And um, I actually wrote, uh, wrote an article for Church Production Magazine several years ago all about IMAG and just everything that was involved. Now, if you don't know, IMAG is image magnification, using the camera to magnify what's on the screen. So just by the name, you would think that what's on the screen needs to be at least as big or bigger than what is in real life. There's a little debate on that, but I think I can say with some degree of certainty just from experience that there are times where bigger isn't always better, where sight lines matter, where you could get a wide shot and you will help the people in front so that they can see what's going on behind them without having to turn around. Because my goal when I direct iMag is to make it so that no one shifts in their seat to see. Now they might shift in their seat for comfort reasons or whatever, but I would definitely prefer that no one is like looking around or trying to see something and definitely not turning around to see stuff. So that's why when you're doing iMag, while most of the time, vast majority, it's going to be magnifying, hence the name. Occasionally, you will want a shot that can get something to help people in the room that are maybe closer to the stage and something's going on behind them, that kind of thing. Now, that's iMag. There's a totally different way of shooting, and this is more similar to shooting for broadcast. And I'd call that shooting for the web or shooting for a satellite campus. Now, when satellite campuses first arrived, most churches that were doing them would have one wide lockdown shot, kind of to simulate the pastor being on the stage at the satellite campus. And it could be that there are a lot that are still doing that. We don't do that. And let's talk a little bit about why, shall we? First off, 
there's no television that's done that way. None. And you're not fooling people just by having a shot of the pastor that's in real life. It's not like you're going, oh, I'm totally... You mean he wasn't here? I didn't know that. No one's confused by that. So it would be better to use the strengths of video to augment what's going on as opposed to just trying to fool people. Um, I suppose if you've got a three screen setup where you have a screen in the middle where you can get a full wide shot that's locked down and it's as wide as the stage in real life, that might be doable and then put iMag on the side screens. But let me tell you this, a lot of satellite campuses tend to be smaller than the full-size campus or the original campus or the central campus. Now that's not always the case, but it does happen. So if it's the case that the satellite campus is smaller, think about the size of the screen that you have versus the size of the stage in the where the message was shot. And also think about if your pastor likes to walk a lot. My pastor will occasionally walk down into the audience and then walk around. So in order to do this lockdown effect, we would in effect have to have a screen which simulates a huge room. And that's just not practical. So in that situation, this lockdown idea won't work whatsoever. And I think that there are a lot of um, churches where they have that same exact issue where it just won't work. So what you can do is you can shoot similarly to iMag, but remember that people are not in the same room. So there are things that you can do in that shot that you wouldn't necessarily do on iMag. So one thing for iMag and Sometimes you're limited if you're doing both and you don't have enough aux outs of your switcher um, that you've got to deal with this. This is something that we're running into right now. We're trying to send video to so many places that we can't get a different feed for iMag and a different feed for the web and satellite campus. So... Here's something that I've noticed that's a problem with that. When you get a reaction shot, or when, let's say, the pastor is talking to someone who just gave their testimony, we call them stories, uh, someone who just spoke earlier in the service, for the sake of the web, for the sake of the satellite campus, it's nice to have a reaction shot of that person. But... When you see yourself on the screen, it's very tempting to look. And if the pastor is over here, um, if you're watching the video, which is on YouTube, YouTube, uh, bit.ly.com slash paultube, all lowercase. If you are looking at that, you'll see that I'm looking one direction and I'm pointing the other. So if you look at yourself on the screen but your pastor is looking at you from the other direction, that can be very distracting. And knowing that you're on the screen, you want to look. So you have to have a degree of self-discipline to keep yourself from looking at yourself and going, oh, oh, there I am, and waving and just looking like a fool. So that's something that I would prefer not to do. I would prefer that if you have that shot, that you don't put it on the screen so the person doesn't know that they're there and so that they're not tempted to be distracted by it. So uh, let's start out with a couple of things. As I say, they're not, you're not in the same room when you're on a satellite campus or when you're on the online campus. So what you want to do is you want to deal with that fact by showing things that people could see just by turning their heads or looking 
in other directions. So again, when the pastor is talking to someone in specific in the audience, you might want to show them in the recording. This also helps in a couple of other ways. Not only does this help bring them into the room, into the experience, but it also helps in that when you do that in the recording naturally, if for some reason you need to edit, we've just started doing this recently after many years of me encouraging people to do this. We've just started recording a little B-roll. Now, uh, let me define what B-roll is for those of you that don't know. B-roll is, in the old days, you used to edit going tape to tape, and so you would have basically three VCRs. You'd have an A VCR, which was your primary footage, a B VCR, which had your backup footage, which was just kind of interesting shots from around, etc. And then you had your record deck, which actually recorded the two. So to go back and forth, you needed these two decks. Although it was possible to do cuts just on one deck by going back and forth on the tape and then playing, recording, playing, recording. Possible to do, just difficult. So that's what B-roll is. You might notice when you see like television ministries and such like that, they'll have people like taking notes, like they're watching intently and they're taking notes or they're nodding with the pastor or whatever in the audience. That could be something that was shot at the exact same time that the pastor was saying what you're listening to, or it could be something that was shot at any time during the service and used to cover up an edit. Especially on television, time is very critical, so you have to get the time exactly right. So in doing that, you might have to cut out a story from your pastor. You might have to cut out a few sentences here, a few sentences there. And if all you have is your primary shot, that's very difficult to do. I've done it, but it's hard because you have to match both a changing camera. Um, you've got to match where the pastor is how his or her hands are, body position, and context. So all those things have to go right for you to make a cut that no one will notice. Now you can fake that out by using a transition, but I'd prefer not to because that kind of draws attention to it. The much better way to do it is to cover it with B-roll. So in fact, I just did this this past Saturday night when I edited our Saturday night service for Sunday morning, it, uh, Sunday morning at our satellite campus, is I had a little piece of video of people taking notes. So our pastor was talking about um, doing the next right thing one at a time, and then he told a story that illustrated that, and then he went back to his point of, doing the next right thing one at a time. Well, in doing that, he took four or five minutes that we didn't have. So we cut out that story and the context stayed the same because he was talking about doing the next right thing. Then he was talking about Billy Graham didn't become Billy Graham overnight. He just kept doing what God told him to do, the next right thing, time after time. So the context worked but he was on a totally different side of the stage. His body position was totally different. I think it was the same camera because we shoot a close follow and a wide follow on the message. So I just covered that bad boy up with a uh, video of someone, of people like taking notes and paying attention and nodding. And doing that, it covered it up completely. It's impossible to tell that I did that. So that gives you an additional degree of flexibility when you are shooting for a satellite campus. Is you, If you put in some reaction shots in the main video, then 
throwing in an extra reaction shot to cover and edit, no one notices. Now, if the only reaction shot you have is to cover and edit, it's much more likely that someone's going to, if they know something about editing, go, you covered up an edit there, didn't you? Now, not everyone will, but some people will. And we don't want to call it call attention to editing. Editing is one of those art forms that's best if no one knows that you did it. So we want to make it difficult to tell just exactly what happened. So that's perhaps another difference. Another difference that I would say between iMag and uh, shooting for the web or a satellite campus is your willingness to get wide shots. iMag, the purpose is to magnify, generally speaking, as I said earlier. Occasionally, you might need a wide shot to show something, again, as I said earlier. But for the web, for a satellite campus, establishing shots really matter. So it's really nice to be able to start with a wide shot and then push in towards the pastor at the beginning of the message. Maybe occasionally show a wide shot from way back to show the size of the room. Just kind of things that you notice when you're in the room that people in another location wouldn't notice. I think those are very, very important things to add in as well. And again, this could be a good place to cover edits. If you've got a particularly wide shot where you can't really tell what the pastor is saying because it's just that wide, all you can see is the pastor's on the stage, you can use that to cover up edits. Now, you, you have to be more careful because you don't want the pastor instantaneously jumping from one side of the stage to the other. But uh, if the pastor is this little bitty on the screen, in a very wide shot, you can't tell what the pastor's saying. So you can cover that up pretty well. But if the pastor in the wide shot is over here on the right third of the screen, and then when you go back in, the pastor is on the left third of the screen, and of course much bigger, but right in front of something that's clearly on that side of the screen, that's a problem. So you've got to be more careful than with regular B-roll, but that, again, gives you some opportunity to fix problems that happen in the live event. Think about it this way, um, and this is primarily for recording. If you're doing it live on the web, you don't have the flexibility to cover up mistakes, but occasionally there are mic problems, uh, like a mic will be muted, it will have been handed to the pastor on, who promptly turns it off, not actually checking, just assuming that it was off. Things like that happen all the time, and you can't get it perfect. But you can cut out those little things if you're editing, and you can use these tricks to do them. So I want you to think of just the audience that you're shooting for. Because it's possible that you're not doing iMag, but you are doing a satellite campus. If that's the case, then you could run amok with your shots. Well, not amok. Amok, amok, amok. Okay, name that movie. Um, you could take plenty of wide shots, close shots, B-roll, do all that live, and just get a very engaging service which is what you want to do. You want to create engagement. And you can shoot in a way that is just documentary, or you can shoot in a way that engages. And especially for music, if it's a really fast song, like if it's uh, hip-hop, rap, uh, harder rock, Remember who is not in the room and shoot for them. Don't shoot for the people that are in the room because they're in the room and a, a bunch of show, slow shots 
aren't going to hurt them one way or the other. But if you're not in the room, you really need the the dynamicness of quick shots for those types of songs because you can't feel the thunderous bass in your chest if you're watching on a little computer. But seeing quick shots with uh, fast pans and uh, stuttered uh, frame rate, well, not frame rate, um, shutter speed. Shutter speed is what I was thinking. That can really add to it. Think, how can I shoot a concert? Not that this is a concert, because it's the heart that changes worship into a concert and a concert into worship. It's the heart that matters in this. But think, just learn those lessons. I think that those are all tips and tricks that you need to think about as you're going out to change eternity. Until next time, I'm Paul Allen Clifford with TrinityDigitalMedia.com. Right now,